It's okay, Bubba. <laughs> he just went right to your hand. I'm the frog whisperer. Hey, what's up guys? It's Dan from Pinpoint Wildlife. Uh, today we have another species checklist video and we are going to be looking at the boreal chorus frog. So let's get into that. So with the family Hylidae, um, most of them are tree frogs. Uh, tree frogs usually tend to be higher up in the canopy. Uh, you'll find them up on trees, uh, on the walls of your house. They're more climbing and they have the sticky toe pads. And they're gonna be higher up basically, so they, we call them arboreal. Uh, now semi-arboreal is when you'd find the frogs maybe in a low-lying shrub or in some tall grass. Uh, you could also find them on the walls. They do have the ability to stick and climb, but they don't spend their entire uh, day and night cycle just climbing. They sometimes go on ground, sometimes uh, just chill in the grass. So anyway, these chorus frogs, and also spring peepers as well, they, they hang, hang out in kind of a semi-arboreal setting uh, where they're in the low-lying shrubs. They're not super high up. So although they're still considered tree frogs, they don't climb nearly as much as a standard tree frog. They're not necessarily like a toad where they're only on land. They're not completely terrestrial. So they're, they're somewhat in between if you, can, if you can find that happy medium. So both the spring peeper and the chorus frog are semi-arboreal but there are some differences that you can use to distinguish the two of them. Uh, one of which being the spring peeper will always have this uh, cross pattern on its back, like, like an X. And um, sometimes it's faded out, the patterning, but you can still make it out that it's, it's somewhat of an X. Another thing is uh, the chorus frog will have a white upper lip, uh, whereas the spring peeper is just gonna have a solid like brownish tan color throughout all of its head. Uh, the chorus frog will also have a stripe that goes through its eye, like a like a war paint mark, and uh, that's another cool thing. Uh, so they will have this black strip here, and then a white stripe here, and that's always going to be a chorus frog. Now there's some different uh, kinds of chorus frog, the western chorus frog and the boreal chorus frog. I've noticed with the boreal chorus frogs, the ones that I usually find here, they could be brown with stripes, uh, brown completely patternless. Um, I have both of those to show right now, but they can also be somewhat green, which is kind of interesting. Um, I haven't seen any green, but I know they're out there. Um, they just have a lot of different colors you can find them in, so interesting frog, and I, I like that about them. Some characteristics aside from having this large variation of colors and patterns, the chorus frogs tend to be a very small species of frog, usually less than two inches from vent to snout. Chorus frogs have a really intricate way of avoiding predators. They actually use a method known as cultural learning, where they mimic the other frog species in their community on how their behaviors help them avoid predators. So picture this, it's 2012, you just got the brand new Wii. You got the Wii, you put, forget to put the strap on, and you're playing Wii sports, you're playing that tennis game, you're just swinging at it, and then you hit the screen, you end up hitting your TV screen, the whole thing cracks, and then you and your brothers are like, all right, we're just gonna stay quiet so nobody knows. And then you guys all stay quiet and your dad has no idea who they need to yell at. So they either have to yell at everybody or nobody. That's cultural learning right there. Like other frogs that for whatever reason chose that they wanna live in Wisconsin, they have the ability to freeze completely throughout the winter and then thaw out during the spring. Hey, that's pretty good. So the diet of these frogs is going to be pretty standard. The tadpoles are going to eat the plant material in the pond, and then the adult frogs are going to eat uh, the different vertebrates they come across, um, worms and crickets, all different bugs. Uh, pretty standard for most frogs. But the mating is a little different. The male mating call sounds like, sounds like your finger being run across a comb as hard as you can, and then bump that sound up by like 100%. And they are strictly an early spring breeder. They breed almost like late winter, early spring. And their eggs are gonna be in masses from like 500 to 1500. 
So they do seem to be a very adaptable species because they're found anywhere from Canada to um, certain pockets in South Carolina. So they can, they can thrive in many different climates as long as they're able to get their marshes, their forests, and most importantly, their vernal pools because they are an early breeding species. So they're not gonna be competing with bullfrogs during the summer. They typically are in vernal pools that keep them safe during the spring. Now the IUCN does mark the chorus frog as a least concerned species, but unfortunately a lot of their distribution overlaps with suburban areas. Now for example, I found this guy right after doing some landscaping work um, in the tall grass after a rainy night. Check that out. Now what about as a pet? Can I keep a chorus frog as a pet? And in short, I would say chorus frogs are rarely seen in captivity, and that's because of a few reasons. Um, they're very loud, they're fragile, and generally they are community frogs, so they need several other frogs to really feel at home. And really, there's just better options. You could get an American green tree frog, a red-eyed tree frog, or really something more simple like a Pac-Man frog, because they're just not the best option. There's better ones out there. All right, guys, so that is our third episode of Species Checklist. We're checking off the Boreal Chorus Frog, a really fun species to film. Uh, if you like this one, make sure to check out our last one where we did uh, the Common Water Snake. And before that, we did the Gray Tree Frog. That was our first Species Checklist. So check out all our Species Checklist videos and uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all that. Um, you can also check out our, down in the description, you can check out my Instagram, you can check out my Pinpoint Wildlife Instagram, and you can check out my girlfriend's Instagram. So check out all three of those if you're interested. We do more photography. Uh, sometimes on the Pinpoint Wildlife Instagram, I do a little bit of education and show some species that I don't feel like I have enough time for to do a video at the time or whatever, so I'll just do education on there. So there's, there's fun videos on my Instagram, so check it out. So I think that's about it. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.